Is gravity really a constant force? I wanted to find out for myself, so I built this machine. Let me show you how it works. When I push this lever here, I'm lifting my suitcase here, which is filled with metal, so it's kind of heavy. And this now acts as a weight on this chain here. And the chain here is in a Hegen drive configuration. On this side here, we have the big weight. And on the other side here, out of the shot, we have a counterweight, just to keep the chains tight. And the chain is then ratcheted up with this sprocket here. The chain comes through the plywood up here and pulls this sprocket down on this side, putting energy into this double helical gear. This helical gear drives a pulley that drives a very small pulley for the big flywheel. On the back side of the flywheel, we have this very professional air governor right here. And if I stop the flywheel, we can see my measuring point right here. On the back of the flywheel, I added this contact microphone on a foam pad. And as you can see, the plastic just flicks it like that. And then I record that contact microphone on the sound card into the computer. So if I put the volume up, you can hear every hit. Now I can use this to make an experiment to see if gravity is constant. So when I lift the bag, you can see the wheel starts moving by itself. Why do I want to check if gravity is constant? Well, if it is, I can use a contraption like this to play tight music with a marble machine. And that's my big goal. If I'm going to build a new marble machine, I want it to play tight music. So the only thing I need to do is to keep the bag at a constant level from the floor. We're still accelerating here. Yeah, we're at 186 BPM right now. 187. It sounds pretty tight already, doesn't it? I think it has started to find equilibrium. Okay, let's check if gravity is constant in the computer. We are in the computer, here's a recorded file, and now we can go to titanator.fun and upload our file, the amazing software from Tom and Jan. We have some settings, let's first look at the best 10 transients. Let's see what Wilson comes up with here. What the actual, okay. I don't know if you understand <laughs> what this means. 0 0.03 millisecond standard deviation. So if I drag it like this, you can see how extremely even the BPM is. So let's put this in comparison to the machine I built in Germany. So in Germany, I welded this whole prototype together and I did a lot of testing. So here's all the data from Germany. Let's now compare the new Hugen drive with Germany here. And I already entered the moment of inertia because the flywheel in Germany is 200 times stronger than the flywheel on this Hugen drive. So let's first check best 10 beats, 0 0.03. I'm gonna upload the best file from Germany. So this is actually the best one. Not that bad, uh, 0 0.2. 
two three millisecond standard deviation. So on the best 10 beats, the Hugen drive is 7.6 times tighter. So let's check a longer section. Let's check best 50 beats. Okay, this, <laughs> this is huge. 0 0.07 milliseconds, 1.09 milliseconds for Germany. Over 50 transients, the Hugen drive is 15 times tighter. Let's check for 100 beats. This beats all my expectations, 0 0.09 milliseconds. Over 100 transients, the Hugen drive is 22 times tighter than the direct drive in Germany at its best performance. But music is longer than this, so let's compare over 300 beats, which would be equivalent to a full song of music. So this is kind of the final test. So let's begin with Germany in this case. So I'm gonna return to settings. I'm gonna ask for 300 transients and I'm gonna ask for Wilson to cast some spells and see how bad or good the Germany prototype played. So over 300 transients, it had 9.23 milliseconds uh, standard deviation, 9.23. So this is a bit of a drum roll moment for me. How much standard deviation does the Hugen drive have for the full song? Let's see. Wow, <laughs> wow. Zero, wait, 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 wait. 0 0.14. So for a full song, Hegen is, my friends, 66 times tighter than the prototype I built in Germany. Let me visualize 0 0.14 milliseconds. This red bar is one second. Let's zoom in to the yellow bar, which is a tenth of a second. This green bar is a hundredth of a second. This blue bar down here is a millisecond, and this black bar is 0 0.14 milliseconds. The machine I just built from plywood and 3D prints played 300 transients within this timing range. So if I zoom back out, millisecond, hundredth, tenth, and big second. Physics is the law, everything else is just recommendations. And tapping into gravity itself and using that constant force to actually rotate a shaft very accurately timing-wise is such a form from function decision that I'm ready to take almost here and now. I'm not done with this prototype. I haven't even tweaked the performance. I'm going to make actually a much better uh, air governor here, which will be geared up and probably improve the timing. And I wanna put more moment of inertia and I wanna change this pump uh, to a crank movement. So I will tweak this machine and there will be more videos on this coming up. I just wanted to cut to the chase immediately and present this project for you all to see how it performs. And I'm I'm blown out. <laughs> it's it's I had a feeling it would play tight. I didn't know it could play as tight as it's playing. And a common question I get is does music really need to be that tight? And in a way, no, but in a way, yes, because there will be other parts of a marble machine that will in induce errors. So it's much better for me to be on the safe side to know that I can actually rotate a shaft mechanically without electric motor with a super high precision. I haven't still decided if I should build a new marble machine, but if I would, it would probably use this design over this design I built in Germany. This flywheel plays 66 times tighter when it's 200 times less moment of inertia compared to the model in Germany. It's just a total smackdown. So yeah, turns out gravity is constant everyone. Take care.